for the longest time, I thought they were saying an IDT ratio. And I was like, what is an IDT ratio? How come I can't search this and why am I not seeing any information on this? I finally asked someone and they said, well, it's actually an I to T ratio, also known as an I over T ratio. And I thought, why doesn't everyone call this an I over T ratio? That would eliminate so much confusion. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Anna and I am a critical care registered nurse. In this video, we are going to talk about what an I to T ratio is and how it is calculated. An I to T ratio is an immature to total neutrophil count ratio. And it's a calculation that evaluates the circulating neutrophils and tells us what proportion of those circulating neutrophils are immature. Now remember that neutrophils are one of the five types of red blood cells. And neutrophils are the white blood cells that are responsible for killing and digesting bacteria. So why would we care about an IDT ratio? Well, we calculate this out to determine an estimate of what a baby's chances are of having sepsis. Because an IDT ratio is a really sensitive test to determine the presence of an infection. Now, just a reminder that this is a calculation that's used in conjunction with blood cultures, with other elements of the CBC, and with the patient's overall clinical picture to determine if they have sepsis. None of these tests are really that specific or selective when looked at individually. So we look at all of them together as a whole to form the clinical picture. In neonates, and especially preterm neonates, we are looking at both the mature and immature neutrophils because the mature neutrophils on their own might not be able to mount an adequate enough response to defend the body against a serious bacterial infection. In the presence of an infection, the immature neutrophils, namely the metamylocytes and the bands, are released from the bone marrow into the bloodstream. And this is the body's attempt to increase the amount of circulating neutrophils in order to try to mount an adequate response to the infection. The majority of neutrophils in the bloodstream are in the mature form, and we call those segmented neutrophils. If more than 20 to 25% of the neutrophils present are in the immature form, you should be suspicious that the infant is trying to mount a immune response to a bacterial infection. So now that we have a little bit of background, let's move into actually calculating an I to T or an I over T ratio. And this is probably going to be a lot easier than you think it is. An I over T ratio is just the total number of immature neutrophils added together over the total number of immature neutrophils plus the number of mature neutrophils. And this ratio will give us a clue as to how sick or potentially sick the patient can be. Now, before we look at some sample CBCs without differentials, let's talk about what each of these ratios mean. A ratio of 0.2 and greater is concerning and should raise your suspicion for infection. A ratio of 0.4 and greater likely indicates that you may need to start antibiotics on your patient, get blood cultures on your patient, that sort of thing. And a ratio of 0.8 and greater is very concerning and correlates with a much higher likelihood that your patient will die as a result of sepsis. So let's look at our first example. If we add together the amount of metamylocytes and bands to total our immature neutrophils, and then we divide that over our metamylocytes, our bands, and our segmented neutrophils, which remember are the mature form of neutrophils, we add those together and divide out and we see that our answer is 0.15. Now, I'm not a physician and I don't have the full clinical picture of this patient, but this is a much lower suspicion of a patient having sepsis as a IDT ratio of greater than 0.4 and certainly an IDT ratio of greater than 0.8. Let's look at our second example. We will do the same exact thing. We will add together our bands and our mets, also known as our metamylocytes, and we will divide that over our bands, our mets, and our segmented neutrophils. All of those added together, if we divide through, we see that our I to T ratio is 0.59. 
Now, this number is significantly higher than our previous calculated number, and because we're greater than 0.4, we want to anticipate our patient needing blood cultures, being started on antibiotic, and having probably having a full septic workup, especially if his clinical picture is indicating that this patient is really sick. So there you have it. You now know how to calculate an I to T ratio, and you also know the significance of this ratio in conjunction with other elements of the patient's clinical picture as a predictor for your patient being septic and as a predictor of potential complications of your septic patient. So I hope that you are able to apply this to your practice so that you can better advocate for the neonatal patients that you care for. Please comment down below if you have any questions or if there are any other topics that you'd like me to speak on. And remember to like this video and subscribe so that you don't miss out on any content in the future.